Hello and welcome to the Brenton Report. Uh, absolutely delighted to be joined by Stuart Fox today. Um, Stuart, thank you for joining us. You guys have had an exceptionally busy uh, couple of days last week. Um, the launch of a brand new machine. Tell us about the Ultimate. Yeah, and first, thank, thanks for having me, Dan. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, so the Ultimate, um, culmination of a lot of hard work, a lot of research, a lot of development, blood, sweat and tears, as they say. Um, but yet, yeah, this is the latest product we've just launched um, in the Kongsberg family. So a fantastic, fantastic milestone for us. And uh, obviously quite uh, fun to see um, sitting on your left hand shoulder, a, a couple of the penguins that you guys have been yeah. uh, sort of showcasing during the open house. Um, just under 100 people came through uh, the doors. Uh, yes, at the that's right. Um, that's right. Yeah, so, so tell us about what they were seeing. Well, what they were seeing is, um, like I said, a combination of a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but our latest machine really targeted at the corrugated industry. So they've seen the, the latest in higher performance technology, um, what we're doing to move the needle in terms of usability, sustainability. So um, we brought the customers to us to make it a very personal experience so they could really get up close and personal with the machine and also meet, um, you know, while they were here, um, the engineers that designed and developed to manage the um, the research to um, to get us to where we are with this machine. So fantastic opportunity for them. And, and Stuart, you, you very clearly mentioned there the word corrugated, because obviously, um, you know, Kongsberg is well known in, in the POS display and short run type market. Yeah. Um, how do you differentiate it? So, so wh why do you now suddenly put in that this is ideal for corrugated converters? Yeah, good question, actually, because um, there's so much new technology in this machine that can be applicable to other markets. Um, we decided um, when we started doing the research on this, the certain things that really the corrugated market won't compromise and wanted more of. So they wanted more productivity, more throughput. Uh, they want usability, but they don't want to lose any of the controls that they had when um, producing something from corrugated. Um, so, that, so, so, so the real, the, you know, they want to be able to adjust the creasing, the knife angles, etc., to get exactly the quality they want. But with that, we would compromise something else. So we'd say, well, you know what? We've reached a juncture in development that says if you really want something um, that's super high throughput for the corrugated industry it can no longer carry, you know, a 30 kilo milling spindle on there because you're, you're making too many compromises. And actually, you know, where you have now have short run digital print and short run digital converting starting to grow in the in the market, in, in, in the world, customers really need something that, that, that will drive their business without too many compromises on it. And, and of course, with corrugated, invariably, we can be talking about quite large sheets. So obviously, automation has been one of the critical components. And of course, the machine that was demoed last week, you were showing it with the feeder and with the takeoff. So talk to us a little bit about the development side there. Yeah, and I mean, we have, just to take a step back, we've always had a philosophy, Dan, that we want customers to be able to step into this in any machine, right? So you can buy the ultimate as a standalone machine. You can, uh, if you've got limited space and you, you need operators to manually load the sheets, you can buy an ultimate that way. Also, if you want to step in and say, well, I need a feeder automated, but actually the unload I'll do manually, you can do that. You can have a feeder and an unload there as well, a stacker we call it, but also robotics. So it's extremely important this machine supported robotics as we see the need, certainly in Western Europe and, and North America, to have fully automated system, which is effectively lights out. You know, you can put stacks and stacks of material, and the machine will load and unload um, with a robot, requiring you know virtually you know no operator um, intervention. And um, what about for um, customers, for example, who? might be flexo printing still because of course there's been such rapid advancements in setup time on traditional flexo machines that they can print 300 pieces now um yeah. so it's not it's not just for digital printing but in terms of um the tooling that you're using talk to us a little bit about the precision element in terms of the 
image to cut registration. Yeah, and of course, critically important for those familiar with the printed corrugated uh, post print as well, uh, specifically, you know, you have the image, need, you need to cut and crease digitally from the reverse side. So actually the print side is down. Well, historically, that's very difficult to, to look at the image and the registration marks and be able to adjust that, um, you know, that fit of the CAD file to the printed sheet. But actually, we have a bit of technology, USC, it's underside camera, it's just an abbreviation, where in real time, as the sheet is loaded, we have a camera that actually scans in real time um, the image of the sheet passing over it. Um, and we have some very nice technology which stitches all those images together on the fly and basically um, will select the registration marks, figure out where the image is on the sheet and ensure that we cut exactly to the print um, that's on the underside there and customers get the quality and the, and the like I say, the fit that they want. Now, now, when you were presenting this to the audience, um, obviously I heard you talking about six sort of key points that, that, that you like to cover. Uh, obviously we've touched on productivity and precision and, and uh, I guess some of the ones that would be quite interesting for us to have a little chat about now. Um, safety. Safety, yeah. um, user experience, and we'll then come on to sustainability at the end. So run us through, uh, you know, the, the pitch on this in terms of safety first. Yeah, we, you know, we spend a lot of time visiting corrugated plants, looking at what customers um, need. And, and, we, and, a, and a part of what we and we were explaining last week at the event is how we really go and listen to customers. You know, and I'm a real, real proponent of providing solutions that customers are looking for not trying to create engineering masterpieces and then find a market for them so on the safety aspect when we looked at how our machines existed in a corrugated plant or any factory actually we could see it was frustrating for example if a, an operator is shuffling around a pallet and accidentally um, interrupts the safety system the machine stops they have to go and stop what they're doing move the pallet out of the way um and go and um, restart the machine. And we looked and thought, well, that's kind of a, an old fashioned way of doing this. So now we have LIDAR scanners on the machine because we want humans to be extremely safe. We don't want to look at what we need to do today. We want to have a safety system that looks ahead. So, you know, any rules that might come in in the future, we're already looking into that and taking care of that. But also we want humans to feel comfortable around a machine that is moving at high speed so these LIDAR scanners basically look for where the human is in the in the uh, vicinity. And as that human gets closer to the machine, it doesn't stop. It starts to slow down. If the human continues to get closer, or the operator, should I say, it slows down even further. And if they get to within that critical range, it will stop. But when they walk out, the machine starts again. Or if they haven't stopped it completely, it goes back to the normal speed. It returns to its full speed. So it's, it sits in a it sits much better within an environment where you have humans uh, walking, uh, moving around, walking around, or forklifts coming in and out of the area. So, you know, it it would be easier to just put a light curtain around it and make it a very simple um, exclusion zone. But we wanted to do something a little bit more subtle, a bit more sophisticated on the safety, and something that would be future proof and very safe for all users for you know perhaps a decade to come. And um, the user experience, um, it, obviously operators are at the heart of any system. Um, and of course uh, we all know because everyone you chat to in the corrugated and even the folding cart industry is the same issue. It's um, you know trying to find decent operators. Um, so tell us what you've been doing in terms of creating a nice easy to use user experience so that um, you know, new and young operators feel excited and empowered to actually run the new ultimate system. Yeah, and, and that's exactly right. And as as we showed last week, um, Ultimate launches with a new version of what's called iCut Production Console. We shorten it to IPC. That's what a lot of uh, customers are familiar with. But we've enhanced the experience now. So the underside camera will detect barcodes now. So it'll automatically select your the correct cutting file for it. Uh, we have cutting keys on there to help select materials and settings. Um, and of course, the machine now has an additional tool position, um, 
which was really popular last week, actually, because that's probably one of the things that, that customers want. They don't want to have to stop the machine to change tools. And now we've 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 allowed we, well, we've added an additional tool position there. So there's even less reason to maybe pause the machine to change something on there. Um, and of course, if you are doing any um, um, cutting from above with print as well, then also we have an, a, a camera above the print which can see it. So it's all about kind of bringing the intuition. And it's interesting with the corrugated market because you want it to be as easy as possible for the operators, but because of the speciality and the, and the needs of the corrugated board, you also want to be subtly able to change perhaps the creasing across the fluting or with the fluting, or perhaps your board line is a bit drier and you need to reduce the pressure overall. So, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a balance to be struck between giving all the the detailed functionality that really corrugated um, experts want and actually making it usable and we think we've, we're on the right course and we've struck a really nice balance with the ultimate machine and finally um sustainability obviously it's a really important um you know word that's being used in the industry right now uh Everything that we produce in terms of corrugated packaging is recyclable, uh, compostable, etc. Um, I'm sure some of the visitors would have been intrigued to hear you talking about sustainability and how that actually applies to Kongsberg. So um, tell us a little bit about um, where sustainability fits and how it's so critical to this, this new ultimate machine. Yeah, again, another good question from you, Dan. So um, just to give you a little bit of the the kind of the history of the thinking behind that, when we set out to start this project for the ultimate, I, and, and, I'm, and I'm regularly challenged by my children, what are you doing to make things better? And when we were looking at what we'd produce today and what we could do in the future, um, instead of it sustainability being a tick box or a green tick that you see on a website, I really wanted, let's, let's make not one step forward that's really put a lot of effort into it and there could have been some pushback because it might be more expensive etc but um that's not that shouldn't be a justification for not doing it so for example uh, and one of the things that the, the customers like to see on the on the the historic um kongsberg machine or because some of these are very large machines the side covers that hide the electronics and the frame etc were plastic so we said well okay why don't we make them from aluminium so they're fully recyclable fully recyclable or we can buy material that's already recycled we don't mind it's been recycled once and can be hopefully in the future aluminium will be recycled more and more so you, you never you can never tell the difference and it also goes down to other parts of the machine remove plastic where possible um, and as we continue on this journey um, you know, it may get down to the point where only the silicon chips or the circuit boards are the things that we can't recycle. I'm a great believer in that when you look at a machine, and we're very happy that customers come along and they showed lots of interest last week, that when they buy a machine, we could say in 10 years time, 15 years time, because Kongsberg lasts forever, they say, well, we'd like you to have it back and take care of it. We go, well, that's easy, because the thing's we can take the steel and the aluminium, we can send it off to be melted down and we can make it again. We're not dealing with lots of hazarded plastics and waste that you can't, that nobody can deal anything. I mean, I really object now to things going into landfill. So, you know, in the future, we want to be able to take a machine back and say, yep, the steel can go off to the, uh, and the aluminium can go off to a recycling plant. And then we'll get it back in whenever it takes three, six months time as new sheet steel or aluminium to once again, make another Kongsberg product. And that's, really key for me and again when i when i um sort of reported back 18 months ago to my children right this is what i'm going to do with our next machine they're like good you, you, you're doing something because they all they're always um my team my children are kind of grown up now but they're like um what are you doing to make it better for our future not yours because these are the things that they're going to have to deal with and I, I agree and i think that's one of the challenges when we went to the r d team and we will continue on that journey dan you know, we want to make sure that our machines have the least impact um, and um, the cust and they fit within a customer's moral um, radar as well. And just to touch on one thing, which I think is very often lost in the technical, is that we have kinetic energy recovery. So when a machine is decelerating, that energy doesn't just dissipate. We store it in capacitors inside the electronics, and then that's deployed next time you want to accelerate the machine. So it's a little bit 
on a smaller scale, like a Formula One car, right? We're recovering that energy and deploying it the next time the machine starts to accelerate. So, you know, we want to look at all those kind of aspects of how our machines are used and say, what can we do that's that's a giant step forward rather than just sort of nibbling at the edges in the margins? Let, let's challenge ourselves to be to really stand by what we say we want to do. Well, Stuart, I think uh, the Kongsberg Ultimate, uh, obviously a uh, brand new machine to market. Um, fantastic to see so many customers last week um, seeing it in action. So uh, listen, I'm wishing you the best of luck with it. Looking forward to hearing about the first installations. Um, so Stuart Fox, thanks for joining us today. No, thanks very much for having me, Dan, and we'll, we'll keep you posted.